Hello everyone and welcome back to the 3T Path channel. My name is Gary Daridas and this is a special video. In this video I'm here celebrating with you my birthday, 55 years old. So I want to share with you today some of the very practical tips from yoga, lifestyle suggestions that make a humongous difference that really impact your life tremendously. But before I get into this topic, in the Vedic tradition, the birthday the person who's having their birthday, they're the ones who give presents out. So I want to give you two presents in this video. The first one I want to give you right away, and the second one I'll give it to you, the special one, at the end of the video. So make sure you stay till the end of the video. So the first present is I want to give you a free introductory to your Bhagavad Gita course right here. I'm not going to ask anything from you. You just there will be just be a link, and you just get it. It's totally free. Right here in the description of the video. Introduction to Bhagavad Gita course. Hundreds, thousands of people have done this course. They love this course and I think you'll love it too. So make sure you check it out right now. Now, let's get back to the topic here. So let's talk about some of these well-being tips that we get from yoga. It's interesting because yoga um, understood this kind of a holistic approach. What does that mean? Yoga is focused on the mind. The whole point of yoga is to control your mind because your mind is the instrument of your consciousness. And so through the mind, you could then attain spiritual perfection, but you'd need to have a very good mind to be able to do that. It's your tool. Now, your mind doesn't exist in a little jar, in a little vacuum. Your mind is part of your body. So you have to have good physical health so you could have good mental health so then you could then have good spiritual spiritual health. So yoga always has this um, holistic approach. And I want to share with you here what I've been doing with yoga. And you know, 55 years old and I'm feeling so good. I'm feeling so much energy, so much, you know, um, vitality. And I want to tell you what I'm doing. So I encourage you to do too and feel the results. So the first thing we're going to talk about is diet, is what you eat. Now what's happening in the world, it's very interesting with all this wealth we've generated over the last um, you know, 100 years, we've generated massive wealth in the world, of course at the cost of fossil fuels, we're not going to get into that now, but we generated this massive amount of wealth and you'd think that with all the wealth everybody would be doing really well, you know, very healthy, but no, what happened is people are actually killing themselves with what they eat. They're eating in a way that's bringing on all the, you know, all the diseases and death is coming from what we're eating. All the main causes of death, starting with heart disease, which is number one, it's all based on what you eat. And so we're killing ourselves with our food. And now what happens, it's not just about like, oh, you're living really well and then boom, you have a heart attack and die. No, what yoga, you know, in my experience and my students' experience with this is that as you um, maximize your, well, your, your, your diet, the way you eat, the way you live, you feel better. You just feel more vitality, feel more energy. Your mind works on a higher level because it is all connected. So we, you don't hear about that so much because people will talk about, you know, like physical things, but they don't mention so much that your mind is completely connected to the physical body. So if your physical body isn't doing so well, if you're not feeding yourself well, your mind doesn't work as well. Your mind gets less clear, less focused. So what should we eat? It's amazing how research has, is proving more and more that the yogic diet is the best diet for mankind. So yogic diet means basically a whole food plant-based diet, not a vegan diet. You just say, oh yeah, vegan diet. You can actually kill yourself with a vegan diet in the sense of you can eat wonderful vegan junk food, very tasty, but very bad for your health. If you, you, like a French fry full of salt. It's vegan, but it's very bad for your health. You can have coconut oil. Oh, very nice. It's got cholesterol. So you can eat vegan stuff and it can be very bad for your health. So you have to eat whole food plant-based diet. So basically, food that is the ingredient. 
<clears throat> that's what you want. You want food that is the ingredients. It's like a broccoli, it's a mushroom, it's a, it's a blueberry, it's a strawberry, it's a banana, it's a leaf, it's a, it, it's, you know, it's the, the thing is the food. So the, as much as you can, because you need all these different things, like the mushroom will give you something that's good for your um, um, immune system, and the strawberry will do them for anti, you know, for this thing, and then the blueberry will help you um, re reduce, you know, acidity, and this. So everything like helps you, and the dark leaf is essential. It's like you just need to, and then you need the apple for that, and this does that, and the other thing does the other. You just need to stuff your face with as much of these nutrients as possible. You know, so just eat, you know, this is sweet potato and fruits and apple and this, and just as much as you can of, you know, dark leafy vegetables and vegetables and, and beans. Beans are so important. Beans of all kinds, you know, soybeans. People like have this thing. Soy is actually really healthy for you. Tofu and soy, soy milk. So just eat as much as you can of this stuff. People always, the first thing people think, like, it's become a thing now. Protein. Have you seen that they sell everything? Like, oh, protein-rich popcorn. It's like, people are going crazy with protein. It's insane. It's just like, a, just, you're just being manipulated by, by advertising. You don't need protein like that. Protein comes automatically with just eating. And excess, and one of the, one of the problems in, in, in the Western diet is the excess of protein. If you have too much protein, it just, it, it's, it's bad for you. It gives you, it increased chances of heart disease, kidney disease, diabetes. It's worse for your longevity. It's, it's bad for you to have too much protein. So having this, like, people just think, like, I just get protein and I'll have muscle. It doesn't work like that. If you don't exercise, it just becomes bad. It just becomes fat. It becomes, it's not good for you. If you want muscles, you have to work out. You have to do exercise, which we're going to talk about, but you just need enough protein. And you just get, basically, you get enough protein just from having your beans and your nuts and your tofu. It's enough. It's fine. You only need 0.8 grams of protein per kilo of weight. And we're getting much more. And so it's actually bad for you. So, so what you need is nutrients. You need like, you know, like the strawberry will have something and the mushroom will have something else and, and, the, and the kale will have something. That's what you need. They, they all have things that are good for you and you want to just get as much as possible of everything. And of course, the whole grains as well. That's what you want for you. So eating like that, what happens when you eat like that? And of course, reducing salt. Salt increases blood pressure. It's a huge thing. You see, you probably have people in your family with high blood pressure. Maybe you have it too. It's not good, you know, it's a, it's a huge problem. And of course, reducing salt is essential. Salt also hardens the arteries. That's why it increases blood pressure. So that, they're figuring out that with increased salt, with hardened arteries, what happens is your brain has all these, you know, this whole network of, 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 of blood vessels inside your brain. They help cushion the brain. So when you have an impact, the vessels help cushion the brain and avoid um, you know, a bigger problem. But if you have hardened vessels, then they don't do the cushioning and then you can have more a serious impact. So it's just bad for just, just, I just avoid salt. I just reduce, I don't put extra salt on anything. Just don't, don't go there. And if something's really salty, just don't eat it. Of course, sugar, we all know, we should try to avoid sugar as much as possible. I'm not, you know, I'm not like hardcore. I have sweets. I like having cookies and stuff. Sure, I go for it, but I do try to avoid it as much as possible. So salt and sugar and of course fried stuff because the real problem is fats. So that's why when you eat meat, when you eat milk and cheese, you're bringing into your body things that will you know, especially the fat is, this, is the major problem. Stuff that's going to be clogging your arteries. And then that's what's going to lead. That's why the number one cause of death is heart disease. Because it's, and it's not just like an old person's problem. You know, old people have it because they're accumulating. But they do, like they're doing autopsies on 18-year-olds who already have plaque buildup in their, in their arteries. Already at 18, you start building up. That's why you're having younger people having cancer. Like here in the UK, the princes of Wales had cancer. 
and she's only 40 something. I have a neighbor here who just had a, a, a stroke at 31 years of age. So these things that you think, like you can read about this, like this whole like epidemic of younger people having cancer and stroke, that's because of the diet. Because basically, you know, we are killing ourselves with this diet. So removing animal products, removing milk and cheese, and then adding all these wonderful different nutrients from all these, you know, whole food plants, that's what's going to fix your health. And that's what it gives you vitality. Again, it's not about just living and then, and then you have a heart attack and die. It's the quality of your life. It's this level of vitality I feel, this energy. That's what you get from having a good, taking good care of following this yogic lifestyle. So eating really well, avoiding these things. Just so you know, like what, do we need supplements? I'll tell you what I take. There's a million different opinions. I'll just tell you what I'm taking because it's working really well with me. So I just want to share it with you. So the only supplements I take, I do take a little multivitamin, multimineral vegan, of course. There's not that much evidence I need it, but just in case, I'm like, you know, why not? So I do take a multivitamin, multimineral vegan. And of course, you have to take as a vegan a B12 supplement. So I just take a smallest dose B12 supplement, a 50 milligram um, supplement of B12. That's what I take, you know, just to, you need that. That you can't go without in a vegan diet. And as a bonus, I do take vegan omega-3. Now you think, oh, so then we should have fish. Fish is really bad for you. Fish has high levels of heavy metals like mercury. So people get mercury poisoning from eating fish. And mercury poisoning is not just bad for your body. It, it can give you dementia. It can, so it's, it's very serious. It, it gives you cognitive problems as well. Because what they're figuring out now, of course, is that all these cognitive issues, Alzheimer's, dementia, these things are connected to what you eat as well. The same um, buildup of fat in your arteries that you're getting from, you know, that's giving you the heart attack from eating meat, you know, and chicken and eggs and, 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 and milk and cheese, those things are also affecting the, you know, the, the veins and arteries in, in your brain. And so there is, those are causing Alzheimer's, they're causing dementia. Those are, of course, there's a genetic component as well, but that is a big part of it as well. So when you eat these things, you know, you're causing damage to your brain as well. So, um, so I do take um, omega, vegan omega-3 as well. So it's better than getting fish oil. It's much better than getting fish oil because the fish got the omega from the seaweed. So you just bypass the fish and you get it from the seaweed as well. It's like the protein. People eat meat to get protein, but the animal got the protein from eating the plants. So just eat the plants, you know, and there's all the protein. Of course, look at the gorilla, look at the elephant. They're strong enough. Get all your protein from plants. It's a better quality protein for you as well. Okay. Now, once you're eating well, your mind starts working well as well. But what you need for your mind to be really doing well and your body as well is sleep. So I talk about this a lot here in the channel. Sleep is so important. Again, more and more scientific evidence pointing to this. Sleep is really important. So like sleep is an important thing you do in the day. It's like a serious thing. You have to really prioritize like the importance of sleep. So that means that when time comes, you have to stop what it's like. I don't, it doesn't matter how good the movie is, how much you're enjoying your video game. You have to stop and go to sleep like we do with kids. Okay, bedtime. You have to do that with yourself as an adult. You have to tell yourself, okay, it's bedtime. Drop what you're doing. You have to drop what you're doing and go to bed. Just like you tell your kids, you have to do it with yourself because it's so important for emotional regulation, for cleaning out, for the body to work its processes of, of, of cleansing. It's so important for your brain, for your memory functions, so many things. More and more, the evidence is there. Sleep is very important. And of course, you have to prepare for sleep. 
So you don't want to like, you're not going to have like a huge meal, like half an hour before sleeping, or you're going to have like a, a stressful conversation, you know, 10 minutes before going to bed. No, you know, you have to go preparing yourself hours before you make sure you've eaten hours before going to bed and we relax and everything is cool. And you're not thinking about stressful work things or family things or no, you're just, you're just relaxing, you know, reading a nice book, watching a nice movie, just relaxing a bit so then you can sleep well. And then you wake up at the same time. The body really wants to go to sleep at the same time and wake up at the same time. That's like a key thing. You train your body. Your body's like, okay, this is what happens. My body's like that. I go to sleep at nine. At nine, boom, I fall asleep like immediately. Like a little baby, I fall asleep within like a minute or two because it's just like my body's like, okay, go to bed, read a little bit more, boom, put the book away, sleep, boom. And then I wake up. I have an alarm, but I hardly ever use my alarm. I always wake up just around that time, just a little bit before the alarm goes off. I'm up every day. I don't know, but like, it's been a while since I've, because I keep the alarm just in case, because you know, I can't get my kids late to school. So, but I hardly ever use it because my body's like, okay, I sleep here and I wake up here, you know, and that's what you need. So sleep is very important. Now, of course, we're talking about diet of putting like all this goodness in your body, whole food, plant-based diet. You're not going to put poison in your side. So you like drink, smoking, drugs. Oh my gosh, you know, they're so bad for you. And even medication. Did you know that medication, like standard medication from doctors prescribed the right amount of dosage, that is the sixth cause of death in the US. The sixth cause of death is medication. So you have to be like really careful, like, oh my gosh, do I really have to take this medication? It's like, what, how can I avoid this? You know, what dietary lifestyle changes can I make to avoid needing this medication? It has to be like an emergency thing, like, okay, I, I have to take it. But you, you really want to get out of it because these things are really bad for you. So that's, and that's, those are the legal drugs. Why to speak of the illegal drugs? So you really don't want that stuff. You know, all that hype, around, you know, smoking marijuana, it's maybe, it's, it's hype, it's actually not good for you, it's really, it has lots of problems with it. So, you know, avoid that stuff as well. And alcohol, there was this whole thing for a long time, like, oh, wow, a little bit of alcohol is good for you. I had a glass of wine. They, they, it, it's all BS, it was all corrupt science. There was, these people were being bought to make these, you know, to come out with these conclusions. And now it's all been debunked. So nowhere, no one is recommending alcohol. So if you're still like going on some, it's like an urban legend now, like the, oh, a glass of wine is good for you. That is complete BS. You can see the recommendation of all the major governments, UK, US, and they'll say on their websites and their, you know, any amount of alcohol is bad for your health. That is the instruction from science from your government already. Any amount of alcohol is bad for your health. So forget thinking that it's good. It's bad for you. Any amount. Okay. Smoking. I'm like, oh my gosh, smoking. I mean, seriously, like smoking, you know, everybody knows. But it, it is so awful for you. I mean, it is like the, it's like scientists is like, oh, you smoke. Okay. Forget, you know, forget, like you're like, forget you. You're just going to die. It's just like, it is so horrible for you smoking. Of course, you know, you should know this if you're watching this channel. But anyway, so smoking is just like absolutely horrific. In the UK, they're actually going to make smoking prohibited. They are passing a law now saying that anybody born after 2009, from 2009 onwards, won't be allowed to buy any tobacco in any form, vaping, cigarettes, anything. So it's got to be illegal in the UK. I think it's wonderful and it should be illegal all over the world. And so should drinking. But anyway, they're not ready for that yet. It's asking a bit too much from society. But of course, in your life, you should definitely make it illegal as well. So no drugs, for God's sakes. So now when you have all this, um, this energy, what do you do with it? Of course, you have to exercise. Exercise is so important. 
again, more and more evidence coming out of the importance of exercise. I am feeling so good at 55 here. I'm feeling so good because I've never done so much in terms of like diet, sleep, and exercise. You know, I've been working this for 30 years, but I've perfected it, as it were. Now I'm doing up to like three hours of exercise a day. Because, you know, I, I walk two hours a day. That's a great thing. If you want to walk a lot, get a dog. You know, thanks to my dog, Bella, I walk a lot because you have to walk. The dog needs it. And so you walk under the rain, you know, cold, uh, dark. It doesn't matter. You have to do the walk. If it wasn't for so many times I'm walking my dog, I'm like, man, if it wasn't for the dog, there's no way in hell that I would be walking, right? I would never go out to walk in this weather, you know, at this time. I don't feel like it, but you do it. These things, you don't have to wait for you to feel like it. You can't wait for your, oh yeah, I feel like a walk. No, you have to do these things. It's like sleeping. You have to be, this is called tapas. It's being regulated. This is a yogic life thing, you know, you just, you have to regulate your life. So I walk a lot. And then aside from that, I do like strength training and rowing. So sometimes I do up to like three hours a day. And I'm, you know, this isn't the kind of channel where like, I'm going to do like, you know, take my shirt off, but I, you know, take my word for it. I've got like a, I've got a little six pack going, you know, I'm actually kind of ripped, you know, like my fat, I've lost five kilos in the last two years from this better, you know, in regime of exercise and diet. So I'm just like, ripped six pack at 55. I never had that. I didn't have that when I was in my 20s. You know, I always had like, you know, a little, little, little tire, you know, the, the love handles. And so you can get rid of that stuff, eating well and exercising a lot. So super important, wonderful. And so what do you do with all this now? So now your body is good. This is, this is the yogic thing. Like now your body is good. So what happens? Your mind is good. Your mind is clear. Your mind is sharp. Just the other day, I had a, uh, a Zoom class with one of with my students, and one of my students, a Canadian student, she said, and she's young. She's like, I've been doing this for some months now, and my sh my senses are so much sharper. I can hear better, taste better, smell better, see better, because your body just you think you're doing okay. But wait until you do all these things. Wait until you, you really adopt a whole food, plant-based diet, exercise, sleep. You cannot be like, whoa, what was I doing before? It's like, it's just like another level. We think we're okay until you go to a higher level. I always tell my students that. You think you're okay. And then it's like, oh, this is much better. And then like, you get a little better. So then, what do you do with all this energy? Now that your body is working well, your mind's working well, what you need is dharma. You need purpose. And of course, you know, I talk about this a lot here in the 3D Path. It's a huge topic of yoga. Purpose. So then you, you know what to do. You're enthusiastic with life because you can clearly see now what you should be doing because your mind is now working really well because your body is working well. You can understand things which otherwise you couldn't have understood. Your mind was just muddled. It wasn't working well because you weren't healthy. You weren't dying. You weren't having a heart attack. You weren't in the hospital. But it's just like it doesn't work well. That's what yoga says. And it's true. So then you have Dharma purpose. And of course, in the, in this, the free course I'm giving you here as part of my birthday presents, you can hear more about Dharma in other videos in this um, channel as well. Now, the topmost Dharma is called Sanatana Dharma. It's the spirituality. So it's the process of self-realization. And so when you have all that and then you can, your mind is working well, then when you work on your self-realization, you work on your spirituality, it's so wonderful. And just to keep it, you know, the topic of the video, just on well-being, the two things we work on this uh, aspect of bhakti yoga is meditation and prayer. And these things have been shown over and over again. Research shows these things are very good for your health, very good for your well-being. Never mind, you know, the, the actual spiritual effects of it, but just, you know, in recordable data, praying and meditation is very good for you. So you get all those benefits as well. So anyway, I'm just trying to tell you that 
though I'm at 55, it's my birthday today, I'm feeling super good. I'm feeling amazing. And that's why I want to share this lifestyle, this path, the 3T path with you, because it is amazing. It super works and everybody should be because they can maximize their life. They can just live better. Now, here's the second present and to finish up today, since it's my 55th birthday, I'm giving 55% discount for you to do my full self-realization and yoga course. We have a full yoga sutras course and a full Bhagavad Gita course. Just today, you can check it out for 55% off. There's a link, special link here in the description of the video. If you're watching this after a while, the link won't work, I'm sorry, but at least you got the other information. All right, so that's it for now. Have the rest of your day with lots of peace and lots of love.